Saying the iPhone 10 is a big departure from the norm is putting it mildly. Apple has essentially redefined what it means for an iPhone to be an iPhone. Obviously, this many changes means a lot could have gone wrong, but thankfully that wasn't the case. The iPhone 10 isn't perfect, but it's proof that the old ways of thinking aren't the only ones worth using. As always, let's start with the design. The iPhone 10 is an impeccably built machine, from the seamless way the front and back glass are joined to the body to the extra reassuring weight of the stainless steel Apple used to build the frame. Long story short, it's what a thousand dollar iPhone should feel like. And for someone like me who has always preferred bigger smartphone screens but never loved the way big iPhones felt, the iPhone 10 just feels right. That's no surprise though, is it? If there's one thing you can count on Apple for, it's for them to build a high quality device. It is, however, a little weird to use if you're coming from an old iPhone. There's no home button, no touch ID, and the 5.8 inch OLED screen stretches almost all the way across the iPhone X's face. That screen, by the way, is excellent. Samsung built the panel to Apple's specifications, and it's among the prettiest I've ever seen on a smartphone. If you're used to seeing Samsung's vivid, punchy AMOLED screens, this one might leave you a little cold since it's tuned to look a little more natural. I certainly don't mind it though, if only because it's leagues ahead of the LCD screens Apple uses in its other phones. The iPhone X screen has a wide color gamut though, which helps make some images look more lively, and it packs support for HDR10 and Dolby Vision HDR, so you're not gonna run out of pretty things to look at anytime soon. But there is a notch, a noticeable black notch. You probably know by now that in addition to all the usual stuff Apple squeezes into the tops of its phones, that notch also plays host to all the stuff that makes Face ID work. In other words, it's a necessary evil. Now, believe it or not, but over the week I've been testing the iPhone 10, I've actually stopped noticing it. No, really. After all, most of the action happens towards the center of the screen anyway. What I can't stop noticing is how non-optimized apps get letterboxed on the iPhone X screen. They're bounded on the top and bottom by expanses of black space, and they just look dated. Not bad, dated. Since unlike some Android phones, there's no way to force an app to go full screen, we all just have to wait until app developers issue those crucial updates. So what is it like to actually use the iPhone X? In short, it's not as difficult as some might think. Since there's no home button, you swipe up on an app to go back to the home screen. If you swipe and hold, you get a little haptic buzz and there's your app switcher. This might be one of my least favorite changes because you now have to press and hold an app window before you can dismiss it. It's not that much slower than before, but dang it, I like the switcher the way it was. At least you can now cycle through apps by sliding your finger across the bottom of the screen. Anyway, since the iPhone X is smaller than the 8 Plus, it's quite easy to operate with one hand. If you need to reach the top of the screen without stretching your thumb though, you can turn on reachability. After that's done, a swipe down on the bottom of the screen brings the top of the screen within easy reach. Your mileage may vary, but it only took me about a day to get used to these changes, except for Control Center. Even now, I find myself swiping up to change the brightness only to remember that you now have to swipe down from the right side of the notch to get to those controls. The iPhone X runs iOS 11, but it packs two features that people have not been able to stop talking about, Face ID and Animoji. The former is clearly the more important, and when it works properly, it's actually kind of amazing. The setup process is dead simple, if a little awkward looking, and after that, it didn't matter if I hadn't shaved or if I wasn't wearing glasses that day, the phone would just unlock after looking at me for about a second. You'd better get ready to use it all the time though. Beyond just unlocking the phone, you'll also use it to authenticate logins stored in your keychain. In other words, anytime you used to use Touch ID to log into something, you'll now use your face. It isn't perfect though. While it worked in broad daylight and in dingy dive bars, it occasionally struggled to recognize me in bed when I just woke up. Maybe my face was a little too puffy or maybe I was just holding it a little too close. In those admittedly rare cases, I did miss Touch ID. Face ID can also be fooled by twins, but it at least checks to see if it can see your eyes before unlocking by default. You don't need to worry too much about someone using your face to unlock the iPhone X while you're sleeping. And then there are Animoji. I at first thought I was too cool for them, but they actually do a really nice job of mapping facial gestures onto one of 12 emoji avatars. They're goofy, but seriously impressive on a technical level. Just know that if you spend too much time trying on different silly faces, the iPhone X gets noticeably warm. Meanwhile, the iPhone X's 12 megapixel cameras haven't changed that much. Shooting with the wide angle view that's set by default is almost identical to shooting with the 8 Plus's wide camera, and that's not a bad thing. I still think the Pixel 2 is the best all around, 
current smartphone shooter, but the iPhone X's wide camera is excellent. The big changes, however, were made to the telephoto camera, which now has optical image stabilization and a wider f2.4 aperture. In bright conditions, this thankfully makes the telephoto camera almost as good as the wide one. The real gains come in the dark, though. Images appear noticeably brighter and more crisp compared to the iPhone 8 Plus, though the iPhone X still struggles to focus at night sometimes. You can now also use the 7 megapixel front camera to take portrait mode selfies thanks to all the tech that makes Face ID possible. It definitely works, but it's not ideal. My face was always pin sharp, but it almost always blurs out the top of my head. This very shallow depth of field also means that if you're trying to take a group portrait selfie, other people will almost certainly get blurred unless you're all huddled together just right. Now, I hope you weren't hoping this $1,000 iPhone performs better than the 8 or 8 Plus because it doesn't. They all share the same 6-core A11 Bionic chipset, and like the 8 Plus, the iPhone X uses 3 gigabytes of RAM. This isn't a bad thing either. The A11 is a very powerful chip, and it handled everything I threw at it, from frequent multitasking to playing pretty augmented reality games without trouble. I've put the 10 through the ringer this week, and I'm convinced that it has more than enough power to handle your daily routine. The 10's battery life is mostly just alright though. I usually pull the 10 off its wireless charging puck at around 8 in the morning, and by the time I put it back at around 9 or 9.30 that night, it was usually down to around 15%. That was enough juice to keep the phone alive until the next day on nights I forgot to charge it, but yeah, don't expect more than a day of use on a single charge. Now, after spending a week with the iPhone 10, I guess there's only one appropriate way to end this video. <clears throat> This is the future of the iPhone, and it's a promising one. Apple didn't get everything right, but the fact that the 10 generally feels as elegant as it does is impressive. On a technical level, this is the best iPhone Apple has ever made. But more importantly, it's a strong foundation for the iPhones of tomorrow to build on.